Connor McDavid might not play against VGK in Edmonton tonight. Our preview comes your way next right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi again, everyone. Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen each and every day. You could find us on places, places like Apple and Spotify. Uh, make sure that you get wherever you get your podcast, our podcast, Lockdown Golden Knights. And please subscribe to Lockdown Golden Knights, our YouTube channel. We are brought to you today by Game Time. Download the Game Time app today. Use the promo code Lockdown NHL. For $20 off of your first purchase. Chris, the reports out of Edmonton. Were you quoted in Edmonton in the paper yet? No. You didn't say I will you. be, I'm sure. I'll I'm gonna say I'll start barking about Knoblock and David Staples from the Edmonton uh, journal will definitely uh, jump in. Okay. Uh so the reports out of Edmonton today saying that Connor McDavid might not play against the Golden Knights tonight. McDavid with a lower body injury that he sustained when he was taken down by the Flames' Blake Coleman on Saturday night. Chris Knobloch said that the Oilers are looking long-term into the playoffs. Um, he also wants to be protective about his players, and we've talked about this on the show a couple of days ago here. Uh, but does Edmonton uh, want this game bad? Yes, perhaps. They're still looking to catch Vancouver, and they still can. McDavid, 130 points, third overall in the points totals. And Edmonton believes that it has depth now to at least play in some areas to cover for McDavid heading into tonight's game and for the final regular season games and beyond. And uh, we saw that McDavid, the reports also said that he missed the last two practices there. And that is a rarity for Connor McDavid. And he missed a couple of games earlier this season with another injury so let's talk about the importance of mcdavid of course very important and will edmonton be able to overcome that loss if he can't go tonight a few things number one the edmonton oilers lifetime without Connor mcdavid are 19 24 and 9 so they're they have a five five game deficit from wins to losses but they also still get points a lot of the times when McDavid is not in the lineup. That's a good team still. That's a pretty good team, even without the world's best player. The Edmonton Oilers are still better than a lot of teams in the National Hockey League. Of course, McDavid gives them a chance every year to possibly win a Stanley Cup. My opinions on the coaches and goaltending, what might slow that down. But as long as you got McDavid, you got a shot to be in that spot. So, you mentioned do the Oilers want this game and what their scenario is. And listen, the Oilers are five points behind the Vancouver Canucks, but two games in hand. So it is very possible for the Canucks or for the Oilers to catch the Canucks down the stretch. So you will definitely see a game effort from the remaining players on the ice for the Oilers tonight. So we'll see if Corey Perry and Evander Kane have another wow. moment together. It's, um, those two have been chirping a little bit up and back. And, um, you know, could could McDavid play if this was a playoff game? Probably is my guess Re reading between the lines. They're being cautious. They're they're doing what's what's the word in Vegas that we love? Oh, I know. Precautionary measures. Oh, my gosh. And so day to day in Vegas means week to week. So I don't know. I don't know what it equates to there in Edmonton with the valuation of the dollar and all that. And. Okay, so Evander Kane and Corey Perry. Uh, so there was a fan that was sitting behind the bench when, I guess, Perry slammed the door. So he went back to the bench, the blow up there on the bench against Cal Gary. And Perry said, according to a fan's uh, recap, um, you blanking turned it over, and then it was game on because he was upset that, I guess, Kane wasn't cycling the puck, and then he turns the puck over, and then, oh, boy. And that could, of course, be a distraction of the teams fighting each other. 
Um, and he said it's gone. So it's water under the bridge for VGK. Uh, Bruce Cassidy yesterday saying that the details in the VGK game are slipping. Sloppy line change gave up the goal against Arizona. You saw that. And with Vancouver, it was the uh, Canucks net front presence. Really, that uh, really was um, outstanding for them. And they found loose pucks. He also, I think, talked about puck luck. And then he said that he said and not yesterday, I said that VGK is lacking grit. Well, Cassidy then comes back in the afternoon and says that his team is not playing greasy enough. Is that the same thing in the hockey world? Greasy? Grit, greasy, grit. bad ice, soft ice. Uh, so we've played more games than anyone in the league. We haven't had enough practice. We had too much practice. I mean, I mean, put it on the chalkboard with the rest of them. Okay. So, but again, it's the details that are lacking for VGK. He's absolutely right. Yes. He also mentioned, right, about uh, the defense, and we know that they've let down VGK a ton, and thus, of course, you see a lot of action activity in the crease there. Defensive zone, he said, his team playing heavy, and it should be an honor that carried over from last season. Do you agree with him? Yeah, I mean, everything he said definitely makes sense. Um, how do you bottle up what Cassidy's thoughts are and put it in the morning coffee or their water or their espresso, whatever the heck these guys drink in the morning to understand what Cassidy is trying to get across. That's obviously the, the Da Vinci code right now of the golden Knights that needs to be cracked. So we'll see if Cassidy can get that messaging across in a proper manner, because they're going against a greasy team. They're going against a team who is going to absolutely Take what eight probably I think presumably Aiden Hill is going to be the star tonight. We'll see about that. Um, but my I'm I'm leaning it's going to be Aiden tonight. So you're going to see everything Vancouver did. They're going to have Corey Perry and Evander Kane and whoever else that's willing to do so, taking away the goaltender's eyes. They're going to be looking for those rebounds. They're going to be trying to do whatever they can to get into the mind of the goaltender. And you know the Oilers definitely need this game to stay afloat so to speak in the in the division chase and the golden knights obviously are hoping to catch nashville for wild card one we'll talk about that of course in the second segment but there's a lot going on tonight um looks like no chandler stevenson uh chandler stevenson is most likely out tonight so uh brisson has been called back up that would probably move hurdle into a full-time center role which there we I'm go okay with we'll see how that goes tonight yeah. Any other lineup changes? Ben Hutton, will he be back in the lineup for VGK? I would be surprised if uh, Haig didn't get the scratch and Hutton came in after that last game. I really think Hutton needs to be in the lineup tonight. The Gold Knights had a nice record when Hutton, I think they went on like a 5 0 run or something like that with Hutton in the lineup. I saw a fan put that up. I, I can't confirm nor deny that because I didn't check it because I was too lazy. But point being is Hutton gave the defense a really nice spark. And then obviously he's out of the lineup right now. So, I mean, maybe, maybe uh, Hutton just comes and takes Hague's place alongside Hannafin. We'll see. Since uh, Chris Knobloch took over for this Oilers team, they've been outstanding at home at Rogers place. 25, four and two, Chris, 25, four and two. And this was a team left for dead. Of course, the barometer is U S Thanksgiving. And at that point, Edmonton was 10 points out of first place. 10 points well, out of first place. That's not 10 points out of first place on U.S. Thanksgiving, considering the way they started. That's not bad at all. No, that's that wasn't bad. bad. That's not yeah, bad at all. Yeah, they did rally bro. back a little bit, for sure. Hey, listen, little, little Chris uh, doubled down on his Oilers Stanley Cup prediction in a couple of Chris and Chris uh, shows a couple Saturdays ago, and he called it right around then. That's the thing. So, um. I don't know. We'll see if he's right. We'll see if he's right. I kind of hope he's wrong. But if the Golden Knights don't don't win the cup again or knock the Oilers out, I hope he's right because it'll be it'll be good for your. It'll make for good TV. It'll make for good TV. But you can't count this Oilers team out, and that is something that I did say as well early on. I didn't think they would be making a push for the division and over a hundred points or anything like that. Honestly, I thought the two teams would 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 flip flop swap spots. Right, the Golden Knights would be alive for the division chase. And the Oilers would be probably in that wild card territory, possibly 
the third seed in the division. So listen, full marks. Um, I've said plenty about Knobloch. I've said a lot more about Jay Woodcroft in the coaching situation. But, uh -huh. you know, you definitely have to give Knobloch full marks for everything that team has accomplished. And we'll see how it goes in the playoffs. But for now, he definitely has everything working very, very well up there in Edmonton. And it's at the spot now where Edmonton, I think, is, you know, besides Vegas maybe, but Edmonton is the team that really no one wants to mess with for as long as possible. We'll talk about some theories about that in the second segment. But Oilers are going to be, as always, an extremely tough out. And they're among the Stanley Cup favorites, and they should be for a good reason, obviously. And one of the main reasons they're in that conversation, the Golden Knights will not see tonight, which, of course, everyone in Vegas is fine with that. But, um... Should the goal should the Golden Knights and Oilers line up in the first round that you will see uh four, five, six, or seven games of McDavid, unless Colasar can take him out like he got Matt Kachuk last year, but I don't see that happening. Yeah, I don't see that happening either. Uh, did you take on a futures bet for the little Chris college fund when he said, you know, back then that he thought that Edmonton I hate locking up money for that long for bets, but I wish I would have because you probably could have got like 40 to one at the time or something like that. But uh for sure. I don't like long future bets at all. Okay. Uh Leon Dry Seidel, 102 points. And by the way, for McDavid, 130, but he's a plus 34 as well. Evan Bouchard, 79 points, Zach Hyman, 73. Uh, between the pipes, Hyman, fifty-two goals. He no one talks about Hyman. I know. No one talks he's, about why is he still so underrated? Goals. Yeah, he'll have a Hattie tonight. Not that he's uh, underrated. He's just under. I mean, there's only so much. The spotlight's only so big. Well, what about Evan Bouchard with seventy-nine points? Yeah, I mean, think about that. These are all numbers. I think no one on the Golden Knights even has as many points. I think no. Six. They only have sixty-four points on the Golden Knights, even. Yeah, Eichel is probably close to that ballpark, but he's had so many injuries. Uh, Sixty? Uh, no, I he's got it at, right now. Okay. Anyway, sixty-seven points for March. Yeah. So I I forgot about March. So how can I forget about money? It's not March. No, it's not March. So madness anymore. He's had his month. Uh, Stuart Skinner, fine, Tony. You knock it off. Fifty-five games, uh, thirty-four and fourteen, two point six two, and a nine oh six save percentage. And even uh, Cav Calvin Picard is playing well. Uh, 20 starts, 55 starts for Stuart Skinner. Holy cow. That's a lot. Yeah, but I mean, this is the, the Oilers do have one thing that kind of puts them with the Kings last season. You look at the goaltending. Yeah, Stuart Skinner, 34, 14, and 5. That's amazing, right? I just Boy, said that. Goals against the two. Is I'm, there an echo I'm, in this joint? I'm building my story. I'm building my story. 262 goals against. That's not very good. 262 is not a very good goals against. Can I just say that? A 906 I said, save percentage. I almost said, because it's baseball season, I almost said ERA. I almost said ERA. ERA that's right good. Right. Right the point now. being is, Stuart Skinner, we'll see what happens when the playoffs start. We'll see what happens when the Oilers aren't putting up five spots every single night because that's what happens in the playoffs. Scoring goes down. It doesn't matter what the scenario is. There's very few tales of a team going through the playoffs, outscoring all their opponents six to four. So we'll see if Skinner can get things going once the playoff lights come on. And I mean, geez, it's pretty crazy. Calvin Picard is uh, in the conversation to get starts for this team. If Stuart Skinner goes cold or if Stuart Skinner goes hurt, someone the Golden Knights basically uh, said adios to back in season number one. So who knows? Maybe Picard will be the one to knock out the Golden Knights at Timo Arena or something crazy. Yeah, at least, you know, starting 20 games, he would have earned the opportunity to have his name on the Stanley Cup, unlike someone who had like three starts last season. Okay, coming up next, let's get back to biz. The race for wild card one. We'll talk about that. We return right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. I'm just reading off the slate. Did you didn't put must win tonight? You need to fix that graphic. It's, I, that's, I gotta turn it. No. That's fine. That's good. We are driven by the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't a search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed, your matching and hiring platform. Over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you to find quality candidates and fast 
ditch the busy work you need to use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And make sure that uh, you go to Indeed, join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of this Locked On Golden Knights show, this very show, will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked On. Just go to Indeed.com slash Locked On right now and support our show by saying that you heard about Indeed on this very podcast. Indeed.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Back on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights, Tony Cardasco, Chris Golick reporting from Las Vegas. Thanks for making us your first listen. Of course, each and every day, we appreciate everyone, especially our everydayers. And don't forget, Fridays are WTF. What the Friday, Saturdays on the YouTube exclusive, it is the Chris Times Chris Show. So NHL Xer, it used to be Twitter, but NHL Xer today said, put out that tweet that said Stanley Cup playoffs are only 10 days away. That's crazy, right? I know we know that it's coming up here in April, but already just 10 days away. That's exciting. It definitely is. I mean, there's not there's no tournament like the the Stanley Cup playoffs and it's the most perfect tournament, I think, right? Everything is a seven game series. Every team coming in has an opportunity to beat their opponent regardless of the rank, regardless of their points totals from the regular season. It's a brand new start, and it's exciting. The games are ferocious. They're mean. There's Especially the first couple games of the series, you can assume just the hatred and everything gets built up. And if the Golden Knights and Oilers lock lock arms in a, in a playoff round, oh, Lordy, those first couple of games are going to be absolutely up. Uh, just mean and everything you think of in a playoff series that that's going to happen as far as uh, shenanigans, Tony, there's the word shenanigans. You're going to see plenty of it. And um, there's no one looking more forward to the playoffs than the golden Knights right now. I really think that just the players coaches, I really, really, really think just a lot of people assume and fans as well that the second the playoff lights come on, it's going to cure a lot of the demons with this team right now. And, those that are relying on that, I really hope they're right. Yeah. Uh, LA Kings last night in the playoff chase, losing in Anaheim 3-1. to one, And uh, that was a contest, you know, that really hurts the LA Kings. They had a chance to move up there in that battle for third place. Is it a, a case of no one wanting to play Edmonton? And for Edmonton, what is the reward for them to move up? It's not like you're playing and also, Rand, if you do move up and you do win the division, their options would probably be Nashville, right, which just qualified yesterday. Uh, shout out to all the U2 fans that helped them along. Uh, and, and, you know, I, it, there's no reward, though, for in Edmonton to win the division. They could get draw the Golden Knights, right, still. Well, yes and no. There's, there's long. Let's start with the long-term rewards. Two rounds of home ice advantage, guaranteed. Okay. We'll start. They're closing there. in on one. They're, they're closing in on at least one. Yeah, no. So that's reward number one. Reward number two is looking at potentially at the Stanley Cup final, having those extra points against you know being in the hunt with teams like Carolina and Florida and Toronto and even Boston, depending on how things end up shaking out for the point total. And that can catch Boston, but the teams that are in the low like one zero territory. If uh, the Oilers do qualify for the Stanley Cup final, that home ice advantage certainly is a big, big deal. We, I think we kind of saw that on display with the Golden Knights last season. Having having the media day at your facility, I think, is a big deal as well. And there's a lot of different ways to to look at that. So the Oilers, they're, they're pedal to the metal to a degree. They're not going to risk McDavid. It's pretty clear. Like I said, could McDavid play if this was a playoff situation? I, I would wager yes i think he probably would be out there but they're gonna take it easy and i mean let's face it with what the golden knights have shown in their last four periods of play mm -hmm. oilers probably are thinking about sitting leon dry and zach hyman and giving a lot of people a rest today 
Yeah, that could very well happen. Predators in the playoffs, as we mentioned, thanks to that uh, 16-0-2 run after no U2 here in Vegas. Uh, Pacific, what a story. What a story. That's a great story. Uh, because we were on that from the get-go, right? Talking about it before the game was even played and how they weren't uh, pleased with the effort. There was a lack of effort with that team and then kind of kick-started them here in really Vegas. It all started game. here. Really elevated their game. What a beautiful day it's been. <laughs> okay, Pacific Division. Edmonton, two games in hand, trailing Vancouver now by five points. Um, L.A. is six points behind Edmonton, but the Oilers, two games in hand again. And again, the top team in the Pacific Division could very well be facing uh, VGK. It is a logjam. Uh, does it come down to the final day of the season again? Perhaps. Uh, but will that race be for the third spot that we're going to keep an eye on? Are you scoreboard watching or like a lot of fans? And do you think no. that do you think Cassidy's scoreboard watching every day and the team? No, not not in this scenario. Maybe last year when, when the Golden Knights were in the division hunt. But I mean, like, like there's fans that are getting ready to celebrate the playoff berth and they're like watching the, the St. Louis Blues and like stop. The Golden Knights are making the playoffs. So let's not waste your time and energy on on that moment that happens this isn't major league baseball where when your team qualifies for the playoffs you have the beer showers and the team goes absolutely berserk uh in the locker room that's not at all what this is and to be frank with you this is i'm not gonna say a failure of a regular season because the Golden Knights are going to qualify for the playoffs but this probably isn't the regular season that a lot of us expected i think you and i were both pretty uh locked in on the fact that that 98 to 102 point range mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. likely where it was going to yeah. be yeah, and we're actually probably going to be right about that, but I didn't think 98 to 102, like, I don't know. I, I felt the Golden Knights would have a better chance to still go up a little bit in the standings with 98 to 102 points and kind of be comfortably in that second and third spot where that's not the case. I mean, the Golden Knights are uh, technically still, they're not locked in on the playoffs with five games to go. Um, I think their magic number is three or four points, and that's assuming the Blues win out, which I would doubt that they're going to do. I doubt the Golden Knights are going to win out as well, given the way things are going. But point being is, look up, don't look down. The Golden Knights are making the playoffs. End of story. Those, and, and if you're going to celebrate the Golden Knights clinching the playoffs, like come on, folks, just you know, better, better uh, aspirations than that for the Golden Knights. And don't forget, things are rigged against Edmonton. They'll play their third back-to-back. What -back. it's this one? I think it's Arizona and Colorado. I think will be uh, part of the final stretch there for Edmonton, which I think is so bogus. But they've really responded well in those back-to-backs so far. They had three of them in the last ten games. Yeah, so and I think um, listening to the NHL Network yesterday, they were or the day before, they were talking about starting scenarios when certain teams may be starting the playoffs and everything. I believe there is something booked at Rogers Place, whatever. One is Rogers Arena, one is Rogers Place, I think, with Vancouver and Edmonton, whatever it is. But This is Rogers Place. Okay, Rogers Place. So the Edmonton Arena is booked with a concert, I believe, on Saturday, 420. Morgan so Wallen. that assures the Oilers will be starting their playoffs on Sunday, the 21st, possibly against the Golden Knights. Okay. So I said Morgan Wallen because I went to a little party last night, a little get-together. And I guess I don't know country music, but I guess every song is this Morgan Wallen. Is this song Morgan Wallen? Is that like a should have had a chair right? throwing? No. Okay. I, I, don't know. Throwing I honestly don't know what, that, what you're getting at there. Okay. No, I, me neither. So let's proceed. But I've been talking an awful lot on this show about head hunting late in the season, right? I talked about it the other day. And they were talking about uh, Quinn there in Vancouver and trying to protect him down the stretch. And then uh, late in the season, you really do need to protect a Jack Eichel on this Vegas team. Uh, you need to protect Mark Stone from going to Sprouts every day. I just see a photo every stinking day anymore. Uh, but the Rangers, Peter Lavalette, uh, the hit on Mika Zibanejad, um, it was a vicious hit, he said, and an intentional hit uh, by uh, Pellich from the Islanders yesterday. And things are getting really Man, they're getting spicy out there. So you do need to protect your key players at this time of the season. And guess Morgan Wallen on every single stinking country song. Well, I mean, Alex Petrangelo is sick, so he's not going to have to deal with uh, Leon Dreisaitl tonight, which is probably for the better. Um, 
still remember that handshake between those two last season. I'm I'm surprised Drysdale didn't just drop him in the in the handshake line. Um, but no, it's fair. I mean, listen, you're going to see some extracurricular activities tonight, right? Both teams are going to want to send a message because there is a reasonable chance that these two teams will end up meeting in the first or second round, most likely the first round of the playoffs. And there is definitely, although when the Golden Knights and Oilers played the home game after the All-Star break, it wasn't that physical of a game from what I recall. So this game, I think, will be definitely different. And if one of the teams pulls away, I don't think that's going to happen. But if one of the teams does end up pulling away as far as uh, you know the score goes, then watch it. It could be uh, could get interesting. Is this going to be a mutual hatred game? That was what I, I hope think. so. I mean, the last <laughs> time they had a mutual hatred game, it helped the Golden Knights. So maybe uh, you know they need to come out of the gate with a little uh, a little fer- a little ferociousness. Is that a word? Ferociousness. ferociousness. Yeah, I think you like that word today. That's word of the day, folks. I'm making up all tabs. sorts of new words. I'm on a roll right now. I haven't played Wordle yet today. I got I got to play Wordle. I'll do that during the next commercial break. Okay, coming up next, our locks of the night and our predictions don't go away right here on this edition of Locked On Golden Knights. Game time is now an authorized ticket marketplace for Major League Baseball. That's right. And you can get your tickets even faster and easier and maybe start to make reservations for the A's in Sacramento because they're probably not coming here. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to the first pitch. You can do that. A lot of fans go to L.A. and like to watch some baseball with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets and tickets here in Vegas for VGK Minnesota will start as low as sixty six dollars. And if you're a big spender, like Mr. Golick, you could get a ticket on the glass for 536 clams. It's all in pricing now that they have available, and you can definitely check it out. Uh, the app is a lot of fun, fun, I should say. It's easy to use. Last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, all of that. Uh, lowest price guarantee, event cancellation protection, job loss protection even. That's something that you don't see every day. You do see the fog rolling in here on the show every day but you don't see that of course uh, game time has ticket coverage you purchase your ticket and it's covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry and much much more take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time you can download the game time app create an account use the promo code lockdown nhl for twenty dollars off of your first purchase i saw uh, tickets there today for the pfl starting at $28, Professional Fighters League. Uh, we've got NHRA over at the Speedway for $32. So much, much more there. Uh, terms apply. Again, create an account. Use the redeem code Lockdown NHL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back on this edition of Lockdown. The vlog is coming. The vlog is coming. Ah. We appreciate you making us your first listen each and every day. Thank you so much. Golic, what are you doing? You're putting those kids up to this. The vlog is coming. The vlog is coming. Ah. And they run away. This is great. This is like a horror movie. Uh, Of course, thanks for making us your first listen every day. We're way over our time. Let's talk about our locks and predictions. I got Wordle uh, done I, during the last break. I Like 15 seconds, bam, it was good. Okay. Do you want me to go first or you? You go first. You go first. Okay. Locks and predictions. Five to two Edmonton over VGK. I picked, I should have picked VGK again to get it, all the fans heated up because they don't like me doing that. I'm going to go. You pick, but, but Tony, whenever you pick the away team, they say you never show love for the Golden Knights. So you're screwed I know. either way. I can't win. I can't win. No, you're screwed either way. So let's be Can I take both sides there? Uh, I'm going to go with Marsh or so. Uh, still, the magic number there, he needs a couple of goals here. So please score twice tonight and put me out of my misery. Did you see that some one one of our fans did the Vegas Bjorn Eclipse the other day? These fans are just 
they're coming at me. They're coming at me. Awesome. Uh, Marsha So and Mantha are my two players. Five to two Edmonton tonight. That's for all of my friends up there in Edmonton. We're huge in Edmonton. We were almost as big as we were in Kuala Lumpur last week. Listen, I'm hoping it's VGK Edmonton because we did have a great time and definitely love interacting with all the away fans that do come on the pod, but definitely Oiler fans definitely bring it in. It's a lot of fun. And listen, we're, I think we're pretty fair when it comes to the Golden Knights as far as not just locking in or locking on huh? on as being a Homer broadcast. We have our moments, definitely me, but uh, it's definitely, uh, I think we're somewhat fair and down the middle. And I think a lot of Oiler fans did enjoy the uh, the shows last year, whoever, whoever the Golden Knights played in the playoffs. And hopefully the Golden Knights have two, three or four playoff opponents this year. That's the ultimate goal, of course. Um, 3-2 Edmonton, I just don't think the Golden Knights have it right now, plain and simple. Um, if you're going to ask me why, I just tell you, go back and watch the last four periods of Golden Knights hockey, and uh, they'll tell you what you, need to, uh, what you need to see right there. So 3-2 Edmonton. Hurdle, I think, is going to be around it tonight. So let's go Hurdle. Uh, no Stevenson, most likely. So besides Hurdle, oh, I don't want to go Eichel. That's too easy. That's way, way, way too easy. Nick Wah is out. Paul Cotter's not been playing well. Barbashev, there we go. And no, Carlson. Let's go Carlson. There we go. Let's, let's go Carlson. I, okay. One thing I am curious about tonight's game, I know we're going over, though, is Carlson's usage. So last time the Golden Knights, Oilers played each other. Carlson, of course, was somewhat shadowing Connor McDavid, and a big thing was made that McDavid, I think, went scoreless that game as far as any points and uh, nothing in the five-on-five. Five. So I am curious how much Cassidy tries to line up against McDavid. And I also wonder if each team holds back a little bit tonight because I don't. this isn't the game you fire your best shots. This is not the game that either team wants to fire their best shot. If they are going to see each other, you will see completely different line combinations, health pending and otherwise, but you'll see game, teams that are shadows of themselves when they come back uh, uh, in 10 days for the playoffs. There you go, Tony, 10 days. Okay, you're going to be trolling the Coyotes fans even further, huh? I'm not going to be trolling them. Stop. I I sent one troll tweet and I was and I and I was no. Aren't you going on, about the Aren't stadium. you going on lockdown coyotes? Are you going? Yeah, on but I'm not doing the troll of coyote fans. That's oh, geez. I'm doing it. sure. Okay. I'm doing Just it. get us no. more hits. That's all we care about. Hey, oh, the, let's by see the what way, happens, at, but that's not that's not my goal. Not at my Rogers goal. Place, it's going to be. There's just one concert. That's the 18th. So they're good. They're all clear. Luke Bryan coming in on the 18th. Get your I'm tickets. I'm simply going off game what they were talking Canada. about on the NHL. Is there a game time Canada? Canada? Okay. I don't know. We appreciate everyone tuning in. We got to get out of here. On that station. Okay. We got to get out of here. Uh, for Chris Golick, I'm Tony Cardasco yeah. from Las Vegas. We appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Locked On Golden Knights. We'll see you again tomorrow right here on Locked On Golden Knights. And please take care.